Hi, I'm Rickshaw Willie, and I, you can't lose when you take a cruise on a rickshaw. My name's Rickshaw Willie. I'm married. I've been married 30 years, and I have two daughters. Well, at first I started just riding around and uh, riding up and down the road. And then I started talking to some of the bar owners and stuff and uh, explaining to them that, you know, what a service I could be to them and their customers. My daughter goes to Akron U and she was complaining once they started this new football stadium that, uh, that they took away a lot of their parking. So I started looking at uh, alternatives, you know, for the kids that, uh, you know, maybe they can correct that problem themselves if they, you know, jumped in, started a business, and I started looking at rickshaws. And, and then I thought, you know, I, when I'm riding on the bike trails and stuff, I thought there's been many a times I start thinking about people that can't ride who would still enjoy the, the feeling of being on a bicycle. And I, I thought about that too. And I thought, well, that'd be kind of cool to be able to take people that, you know, can't ride a bicycle down the road on a bicycle, so. I ran with the Bulls in Pampa Lone in 1975, and I got knocked down in, by the crowd, and the Bulls ran right behind me. I, I laid down, I rolled up into, uh, and buried my face into the curb, so. And uh, when I jumped up, there was another set of Bulls running down the road, and which I didn't know there'd be two sets. So I jumped up and uh, ran up and jumped on a fence. And everybody told me that if you try to get out, that the crowds will push you back in because you're not supposed to leave. But I entangled myself into that uh, fence that uh, you'd have thought I was webbing because uh, there was no way they were going to prop me, which no one tried to anyway, but I was going to make sure of it. But uh, I was in the, the Army from uh, December 15th. 1972 till December the 11th or December the 4th of 1975. I got a 10 day early out. I quit school the day after I turned 17. My parents had to sign for me to go in <clears throat> and um, I went in hoping I'd get to drive truck but uh, they made me a field wireman which uh, I strung telephone lines and stuff stuff like that but I only did that through uh, AIT advanced individual training and then I um, I became a captain's driver when I got to Fort Knox. I would, took basic and AIT at Fort Polk, Louisiana and then I became a captain's driver at Fort Knox. I drove a captain, uh, uh, Captain Davis at Fort Knox the whole time I was there and then I got stationed in uh, bomb holder Germany. A lot of guys over in Germany didn't like bomb holder because it was up on top of a mountain it was a big field artillery uh, base, <clears throat> but um, yeah, I was stationed in the first and the 83rd field artillery over there. And it was fun because I, I hitchhiked a lot over in Germany. I would go to Heidelberg and, and actually rode on a barge, hitchhiked a ride on a barge, me and a friend of mine. And he swore we'd, I'd never get the guy to give us a ride, but he, he was in one of them locks down there, and I kept yelling, you go to Heidelberg, you go to Heidelberg. And he brought us on board, and then he put us to work, told us that we were going to get a ride, we were going to work for it. So it was neat. We were riding up the Rhine River and checking out the castles up on the, up on the mountain and stuff. Yeah, I, belo I belong to uh, the Stark County Bike Club. Uh, it's a good group. The... Um, uh, Ed Grace, who's a ride leader a lot of times, he'll uh, he'll never leave a rider behind. So the first one, uh, first road ride I ever did with the Star County Bike Club, that's what they normally do is um, road rides. And Ed Grace is like 74 years old now, but back then he was like 72, 71. And I thought I was staying with him. And at the end of the ride, he uh, he. I told him, I said, well, Ed, thanks for uh, staying with me back there. And he went, oh, he said, I'll never leave a rider behind. And here I found out that Ed was staying back with me, that he could just outride anybody just about in the whole club. But something funny about that day, it was my first day out on the ride <clears throat> on my new road bike. And uh, some little old lady pulled up beside me, and she had to have been 
close to 70 years old. And she was real frail looking little thing. And she pulls up and she says, hello, my name's Evelyn. She says, I'd like to thank you for joining our bike club. And, uh, and you know, and she's talking to me and welcoming and, and we talk for a little bit. And she says, all right, well, I'll see you later. And she rides off. And I'm thinking, there's no way I'm letting this lady drop me like this. I stand up and I'm chasing her down the road. And finally, I just like, just go on. You know, you have more experience at this. I never did catch her. Uh, I've been playing harmonica off and on since the 70s. I'm not any good at it, but uh, I just do it more like more for relaxation. These Converse's my mom bought me all oh, probably 20 years ago. And I used to go to the Maslin football games every Friday night and I was, um, they would play this song, Stand Up and Shout, when I stood in the North End Zone. And they, um, and I would dance whenever they would start playing Stand Up and Shout. And uh, it got to the point where everybody was calling me the dancing man. And I mean, I would, when, every time Maslin would score and they would start to play the song, the whole crowd would come around, and all the little kids would all come around me, and we'd get to dancing. And uh, for this went on for a few years, you know, probably five or six years. And my mom saw these red tennis shoes, and she thought that would just, you know, be perfect for me. When I bought the rickshaw, I thought, you know, I need something that's going to really, you know, other than the rickshaw, catch people's eyes and the orange tennis shoes. Um, I believe the college kids would rather have this than the bike. You know, the, would rather have the Chuck Taylors than the bike, so. Um, I like the people. Uh, I like the people. The, they've stopped me and talked to me a lot. And this, um, I just want, and plus I like to ride bicycles, so. Just fun riding up and down the road and talking to people and pulling over and waving at them. And, and the kids, I like the kids. They all find the, the rickshaw, you know, really neat. What I like best about downtown Akron is that um, they're constantly improving it and making it safer. Uh, there's a lot of history down there that um, when you, you know, to be learned, you know, and there's, but just the fact that it's improving, it's becoming more of a college town instead of an industrial town. Like I said, it just Akron is really cleaned up. It's a beautiful downtown area. I guess my final thought would be to uh, be careful when you're driving because there's bicycles everywhere. Don't run over somebody on a rickshaw. <laughs> When you're downtown Akron, Ohio, uh, and you see Rickshaw Willie coming down the road, uh, just give me a shout and I'll slide over and pick you up. My, one of my favorite sayings is, life is not measured by the number of breaths we take, but by the moments that take our breath away. And uh, I like to, I like to live by that.